Welcome everybody to a Stanley Cup Champions edition of Game Changers. Look at Alexander Barkov this week with the trophy at 11 Whoa. in Miami. That trophy has been everywhere. You, you There's Anthony you, Stolarz. You think they were there later than 11 a.m. or 11 p.m.? No, about 11 a.m. You had it right the first time. <laughs> Got Matthew Kachuk. Everybody's freshly shaven after those beards were going wild for the last couple of months. Carter Verhage in there as well. Aaron Ekblad in the background. And check it out. Matthew Kachuk had an appearance the other day. Look at that. He needed he needed BSO. Oh, wow, look at that. Serving the chicken. Chucky serving the chicken. All you can do is applaud those guys, man. Good Outstanding. Stuff. Outstanding stuff. All right, we are without our fearless leader, Mike Cunio. Yeah. He's, yeah, I think he's hockeyed out. I think so. He'll be back with so. us next time. Steve Goldstein, Kimbo Camper. And we are joined by Panthers radio analyst, original Panther, Billy Lindsay is with us. And first off, Billy, let's start with what it means to you because you started yeah. with this franchise you had the biggest goal in franchise history yeah. for about a quarter of a century when you scored that goal against yeah. Boston to win the first round of 96 all those years Bo being with Billy yeah. I'd bring it up and he'd always say we need a new memory I don't yeah, want to be the number one yes. anymore well you got a new one right now <laughs> couldn't be any better than this right Billy now yeah I can't get any better you can't it's uh, the cherry on top and this team such a gutsy effort all the way through and when you need it the most in game number seven it just comes out in spades and there was no black or white into that game it was all or nothing it's going to be the biggest collapse in nhl history there's no sugar coating that uh, 1942 the leafs there's only six six teams in the league world war ii uh you have that three nothing lead it evaporates you go into that game seven with a lot of pressure and it just showed the mental fortitude of the goaltender and the whole group, Paul Maurice, the coaching staff, they played the best game. Every single player on that ice let it out, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm most proud of, you, is that they rose, rose to the occasion on the biggest stage at the biggest time. You know, Goldie and I were talking just before you got here, is that game was a gr forget the who forget who won and lost forget the Stanley that was a great hockey game it was I it was gold to gold back and forth back and forth just a just a great hockey game two teams battling it out in the biggest game maybe the biggest one of the biggest games ever in hockey and and, and it really stood the test it's going to stand the test of time as a great hockey game and certainly a fabulous win for the Panthers Yes, in one of the epic all-time Stanley Cups. If you ask me who won the Stanley Cup in 2002, uh, not quite sure. Yeah. Uh, there's, I remember 2011, uh, Boston, Vancouver, and Vancouver burnt the city down. Uh, different kind of memories stick out uh, with Stanley Cups. This one, you're going to ask people 15, 20 years down the road with the Connor McDavid performance and the Panthers losing that three to nothing lead. This is going to be remembered in the lures of hockey history and the Panthers came out on the on the right <laughs> side of it uh, that's that's kind of what makes it extra 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 special Billy you're a Panther through and through even the years where you weren't here in South Florida playing for someone else player a broadcaster what was the emotion like for you when you finally realized in that moment they were going to win the Stanley Cup uh, wh what was going through your body and your mind in that moment well, not a lot going through my mind, obviously, if you were able to get any kind of a glimpse inside of the radio booth. I broke every decorum of a broadcast <laughs> that you're probably supposed to do at the end of Game 7, and everyone says that maybe there's something scripted that planned that you would say, and especially for your play-by-play -play guy. Especially, Goldie, you know this better than everyone, the moment to shine, and kind of just jumped all over Doug, unfortunately. Uh, every atom and a nerve cell in my body exploded with adrenaline that I've never felt before. I, I've, I've never been so nervous before a game, uh, maybe not even playing because I had no control in the outcome. So I was just hanging and teetering on every second of the game. You never feel more alive though. Uh, there's certain moments in your life where you're just wrapped in a moment so vividly and that is being alive in every, every fiber and being of your body and just kind of experiencing that and then once the clock ends it's just whoa it happened <laughs> everything explodes the words coming out of my mouth make no sense uh i'm just uh, euphoric uh, that the panthers have, have won this stanley cup it's the greatest feeling that i've ever experienced uh personally to see this team cross the finish line what it meant to this community going all the way back to, to the early 90s 
Uh, there's our boy Chunky Mangia with uh, Goldie and, and some, of the, some of the guys, our extraordinary captain, Barkov. But you, ha you have to have a brotherhood in, in the locker room. You have to have a special thing. And a lot of the stuff that we saw on the ice is developed off the ice. And you have to have this chemistry uh, to go through it. And Kim and Goldie in life, you're going to fail. Uh, there, there's no way about it. Uh, you're you're going to fail. You're going to have bad times. But how do you handle that failure? What goes on? What leads to a moment like this? Well, if you accept failure, you're going to be stuck there forever. And you're never going to quite moving it. And I heard in a great speech one time, fail. If you fail, fail forward. Uh, so we had some down years as an organization. Mr. Viola, we make the playoffs four straight years. President's Trophy doesn't go so well in the playoffs. Go to the Stanley Cup. Uh, you get beaten down by Vegas. You're, you're failing, but you're failing forward. You're going in the right direction. You're learning from these experiences. You're pushing. You're grinding. And what do you take from those failures? Well, you see it with Goldie and all the fans. When you fail and you ultimately succeed, it just makes it that much more special at the end. And that's the great thing about life is that there's going to be – and that, that just sums up life, and that sums up sports. So uh, – so to go through that, to see it go through the down years, the 90s, and to get to the pinnacle, I uh, got to share with my father, with my wife. Uh, my father's here with me. To put that kind of bow onto it uh, with that that group that did it on the ice and this whole organization that, much like when Mr. Heisinger owned it, it's a family from top to bottom. Billy, and I think I, on through. watching from the stands, I think everybody could see how close this team were. You, you, you've got the inside look at that team. What made them so special? Because you've got to be a tight team to go down, to go up 3-0, to get, to get, get back to 3-3, and then come into a game seven, a crucial game seven. You've got to have a tightness in that locker room that gets you through that. Well, you have to have a belief beside, for the person sitting beside you, yep. a, an unwavering belief. So when it starts with Captain Barkoff and players that are going to work so hard, and now once the fear of letting the person down beside you becomes so great that if you go home after a game and you lose those three games, you're not going at home and wearing, geez, I just didn't play very good in game number five. Uh, you're, you're so disappointed. Look how hard that other person's working, pulling on the rope. I, I got to be able to match that work ethic. And then when it all comes together, that's why the Panthers won game number seven. It, it was all... 19 skaters on the ice, the 18 players and the goaltender that were able to get the job done. On the other side, the end for the Oilers, it was superstar power. When they got down, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, Zach Hyman, they played almost the whole third period. Mm -hmm. You need a team of individuals that are bonded together with a core belief that when it comes crunch down, crunch time, that person set, sitting next, right next to me is going to be going as absolutely hard. They're going to drain every ounce of energy out of their body to win this cup and that's that's what this panther team had and i believe that is why they ultimately won the stanley cup they were the best team in the nhl at the end of the day billy you're sticking around with us we got plenty more coming up on this stanley cup champions Ooh. edition of game changers cbs miami stop giving them has applause. you covered 100 percent po parade of champions right mm -hmm. here streaming live as well cbsmiami.com see it on pluto tv sunday at 10 30 fort lauderdale beach the parade of champions Game Changers, Stanley Cup Champion Edition, the Cats have won it all, continues coming up. Game Changers, Stanley Cup Champions Edition is sponsored by your Volkswagen dealers of South Florida. Check out local offers at VWFlorida.com. It wasn't easy. It's not supposed to be. It was. Uh, it was just as hard as uh, as we expected it, and and we did it. We did it. We uh, were Stanley Cup champions, and most. Um, um, the thing I'm happiest about the most is that all these guys are my brothers for life now. Woo! Unless you get to get the haircut. All hey, right, get, Lombo. Hey, get Rick Flair in here. Where's there he is? There he is. Woo! All right. 
Oh, what a moment that yeah. was being down there in the ice. I, as you can see, have shaved. I've been there waiting, you Bo. Yeah. You know, I went up to a couple of guys and said, it's getting a little bad, you know, not, and they're yeah, like. It was looking, it looked a little, a little ratty out there They for a looked while. seriously at me. that travel trip you had, yeah, those that, trips well, you have. That's yeah, another yeah, whole. And a couple of guys go, no, you're not shaving. And they weren't joking. <laughs> yeah, so I get it. Finally got it done yesterday. Right, Bill Lindsay is with us. We want to get Billy to coach Paul Maurice in a moment. Let me go back to something you said last segment about Sergei Bobrovsky. This guy woke up. Mm. 10 days in a row, yeah. one win away from winning a Stanley Cup. That, that's never happened where it's spaced out like yeah. that, unless, you know, when you're in Super Bowl week yeah. or something. But how do you think, Billy, that Sergey was able to keep it together? He took that day off, you know, the practice yeah. day before game number seven, skated in the morning. He was pretty much the only guy. How do you think Bobrovsky held it all together to really play a terrific game in game number seven and, and cement himself as a Hall of Famer probably? Not probably. He's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, don't tell him any, any short, short. How does he keep it together? He's a veteran. Uh, you want a veteran goaltender. He's won two dozen trophies. He's reached the pinnacle of, as far as the goaltending during the regular season. Uh, the playoffs, he comes here. You know, the first three years of that contract, everyone's saying, why did we ever sign this guy? <laughs> and this, this contract's terrible. And all of a sudden, it's the best contract that we've ever had maybe in Panther history. And it's uh, between the ears. There's a big rink on the ice, but the nine inches between your ears, that's the biggest rink that you'll, you'll ever play on. And he's been through it. He's got the mental fortitude on that rink between his ears to dial it in when the game matters most. Okay, I'm going to be one of the best goaltenders on the planet when my team needs it. it for a goaltender especially, it, it's a mental. It's a mental challenge. And he gets beat up for a few games. He just backs off it whitewashes it clean mm. clean slate and that's why you have a veteran in that game of that magnitude and his work ethic preparation visualization all that goes into it when that puck is dropped he's dialed in well let's talk about the coach paul maurice 15 months ago this team was struggling trying to get into the playoffs paul maurice in the back of the bench unloads on that team <laughs> and and that turned the season around now you get to a situation where you've won three now it's three three and he was the calm in the storm throughout that whole playoff never changed his voice always positive the whole way what can you say about what he did to help this team get through what's been what were they where they were 15 months ago to where they are right now 26 years behind an NHL bench and uh, I actually talked to Paul yesterday about it and just what he was able to ride through and he said at the start of game seven he said my, I knew my team was right and when he says that he knows that his team is right he knows that they're ready to go to battle they're going to be on the four check and the, they, he pushed them really hard at training camp and they accepted the challenge and once they accepted that and they knew that they had this DNA identity that they got from last year that everything that the system wise were in check the coaching was done now now the locker room became self-sustainable with the leadership he doesn't have to walk in there like he did he doesn't have to yell at the players too often he knows that he has the leadership in the room that those guys are going to be ready to play when it matters most and so paul you have 20 individuals and you played him at a high level you understand once you get to the professional level there's different rules for every single player. Yep. Uh, one person you got to be able to kick in the rear end. The other person you got to be able to pat on the back. How do you get the most? The guy making 10 million, the guy making 800,000. There's going to be something different. How do I tap into that mindset? How do I get the most out of that player? Well, Paul Maurice, with his experience and everything that he's been through with in the game, is able to sit down and understand. Okay, I understand how to push this person's button. What to get him going. Uh, that's the greatest compliment. When you look at a coach, does he get the most out of his players? Yeah. And that answer for Paul Maurice during this run, and for, for most of his tenure, is, is yes. So those are the, the, the two things and the quality. And he sucked it. during the playoffs, he sucked a lot of the oxygen out of the room with his press conferences. Yeah. And maintaining, maintaining that, what you're talking about, Kim, that really stable, just kind of quiet confidence uh, that you need. There was never no panic. Uh, going into game seven, he said, I didn't have a doubt. Uh, I knew that we were going to get this done. So when you have that kind of belief behind your bench and you know and understand in the locker room that they have that same sort of belief, uh, that's, that's, that's Paul Maurice in a nutshell. Uh, and that's why he was so calm after all these years. 
and was able to that that game seven was massive for him. You talk about punching tickets into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. He punched his ticket along with Sergey Bobrovsky. He's in the hall. Yeah, uh, and and by the way, undefeated in game yeah. sevens in his yeah. career as well. So believes yeah. in his system. You talk about the belief, and Billy, I think a lot of things for the franchise changed when Joel Quenville was hired, when he walked in the yeah. door, became a, hey, we're going to push you around, we're going to beat you, we're going to have yeah. fun, and you're not going to be able to do anything about it. But then it took another step when Matthew Kachuk came. If you're on that team with Matthew Kachuk and he's kind of got that bravado and he's willing to do whatever he needs to do to win, he didn't have the huge numbers in this year's playoffs, the big goals that he did a year ago, but how big of a factor in this whole thing is, is Kachuk? Because, you know, a little bit, you know, as this thing went along, maybe a little bit of a backseat to Barkov and Bobrovsky, who were so good as far as the on-the-ice production. Yeah, but, but he's loud, he's brash. He's confident. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down here in South Florida, but he's got that Boston swagger. Uh, <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> there's, a, there's a, I wouldn't call it cockiness, but it's just walking the walk. And that's what Kachuk uh, brings to this team. And the identity that needed to change after that President's Trophy season and Paul Maurice was it went from run and gun to dump and chase. And Matthew Kachuk comes in here. You want a guy to get in on the four check, make little plays, and then all of a sudden become this mean, angry team that everyone plays against. Well, he was the leader of that. All of a sudden, the Panthers went from kind of a showboating, high offensive team to a team that's just going to punch you in the mouth for 60 minutes, whether it's with the body, scoring goals, uh, chirping at you. And everyone kind of latched onto that, and it became a pack of wolves, all for one, one for all. Well, he's the leader of those pack of wolves in that kind of sense. <laughs> It's uh, he's doing the chirping, he's doing the barking, and uh, in the playoffs, you can see it even throughout the, the regular season. You touch our goaltender, you get whacked in the face. Yeah. Uh, there was no difference, Sam Bennett, all these guys. All of a sudden, this team, and it changed with the identity of Kachuk and the coaching style. It became mean, it became nasty. Uh, if you're going to beat us, we're going to get a pound of flesh. It doesn't, no matter what, we're, we're taking our pound of flesh if you want to win. And that really became a staple of this Panther team and not teach each other. What about Barkov? Kind of the quiet guy in there, but th but throughout the, the last couple of years and certainly this playoff series, people are talking about him as maybe the best player in hockey. He plays defense. He plays offense. He gives you assists. He scores. He does all the things that you want a, a, a hockey player to do from top to bottom. How, how far did he step up in the lore of, of, of the, the NHL? Well, two Selkie trophies. Uh, if I was to build, no, this is no disrespect to McKinnon, Connor McDavid, Kucherov, some of the other star players around the league. If I was to build a prototypical hockey player that I wanted in my lineup, I would like a six, three foot centerman that is hard and nasty down deep in the corners, never cheats the game, is always on the defensive side of the puck, has brilliant offensive capabilities, has that quiet humility. One of the one of the most humble superstars that you that you would ever find. He is going to shun the spotlight and just put it back on his players. And for a captain, it's a good yin and yang with Kachuk because I talked about the brassness of Kachuk. Well, you have, I played with a Scott Mellenby that was similar in the way that Barkov is, quiet in stature, but leads by the tempo that he sets in practice and the way that he plays the game. It's always going hard. And so you have this captain and this leadership that every time he steps on the ice, it's going to be done done right. And it's going to be done to perfection almost. And Alexander Barkov, this captain, the first Finnish born captain mm -hmm. to ra raise the Stanley Cup. He's grown into that role. He went through some tough times. And uh, you can't say enough about it. I, I, I'd like to brag on and on about him, but uh, <laughs> you, you could go all, all day about how good Sasha Barkov is. Yeah, he's building a Stanley yeah. Cup uh, and a Hall of Fame resume yeah. himself. All right, our favorite moments of the Cup win and where this championship ranks in South Florida sports history. That's coming up with Bill Lindsay here on a Stanley Cup Champions edition of Game Changers. Stay with us.
once that clock's at zero, there's no more pressure. Cups in your hands, you take your lap. What was that like? Oh my God, I, I don't even know. It was, it was everything you dream of up until this moment. It was everything and more. It, it's. I can't even put into words, just salation, joy, uh, uh, bliss, I don't know. Hey, it's, it's going to be out here. All right, the words of Evan Rodriguez with our own Mike Cunha on the ice yeah. on Monday night, Amherst Bank Arena. We re rejoined Bill Lindsay here in the Stanley Cup Champions edition of Game Changers. Here's the question, guys. Uh, what, eight pro championships in our professional sports history in South Florida? Start with you, Billy. Where does this one rank all time well i'm never going to take away from the dolphins undefeated i understand that history and going undefeated and football and everything that that means that's an accomplishment all on, on its own so that's number one off the top of my head uh there it is don shula raising that trophy and, and i don't know how old i'm not <laughs> i was one year one years old there you uh, go i thought <laughs> perfect season uh let, let's go after that doing Dwayne White, Wade's first title sticks out in my memory. Uh, this Panthers epic is going to be high on my list. It's going to be number two for me. I don't know where to push it, put it in South Florida lore. I like Dwayne Wade's original mm -hmm. of the, the three championships. Uh, I know LeBron and everyone, but Dwayne, Dwayne Wade's first one really stuck out to me. And then when Shaq and the boys and they all got together, it, it was pretty, pretty special to watch. Uh, that run that they were able to go through it's, it's hard to put into context when you went three uh, and you put the totality of that together that's pretty impressive then i remember craig council scoring the game winning run with wayne heisinga so to rank him i'm probably not the right guy to do it but so I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll go the undefeated championship number one for sure all right dolphins one panthers yeah. two in the original heat oh six three for Lindsay. Yeah. what do you got Bo? well I, I i gotta go with the undefeated dolphins but i'm gonna tell you this this one's ranks number two with me for one reason yeah. i'm a broward guy <laughs> this is a broward That's championship right. <laughs> all the other ones have been dade county championships this is broward's first world championship team so i'm gonna put this number two behind a perfect season i got it the same way perfect season is a perfect season yeah. But this thing, especially in the age of social media, the way these guys yeah. are celebrating it with all the fans yeah. all over South Florida makes it special. Billy, congratulations to you. Get that cup. Great call. Thanks for being with us. Congratulations. Be to proud you of too. that call, my friend. All of us. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it's going to take a while. But uh, <laughs> one day, maybe. But uh, let's take it. Thank you very much for having me on, Goldie. Tim, you guys are the best. And. <laughs> Stanley Cup champions. Still Let's sounds go. good. Billy, have a good summer. We'll talk to you soon. Game Changers rolls on right after this. <laughs>on Game Changer, Steve Goldstein, Kim Bocamp. We were wrapping up this Stanley Cup Champions edition for the first time in 11 years. One of our teams wins a title. It's the Panthers, the epic Game 7 win at Amaranth Bank Arena, 2-1 to one over Edmonton. All right, Bo, a big body of the Stanley Ooh. Cup play. What, what was your favorite moment? Well, there's a lot of things you can pull up, but you know, I'm going to pull out one that most people won't remember. It was Game 5. The Panthers were, were down by one, and, and there's an open goal, the empty net, and, and, and the, the Oilers have it going in Matthew Kachuk lays out stretches out his stick as far as he can mm -hmm. knocks the puck away now they scored the goal but that told you that this team had no quit in them mm. at that point that to me was my favorite moment I like that now that's a good one it's kind of underlying yep, you know yep. they end up, there, there it is, is. Right I mean there. that's a full stretch from Kachuk full there stretch. and there was only 15 that's seconds it. left in the game yep. he could have just let it go you're right McDavid right after put it in it just showed you the heart that yep. Kachuk and this team has I'm going to go with the post game on game seven because Alexander Barkov, though you mentioned he yep. usually doesn't show all that yep. much emotion, but when he walked away from Gary Bettman, skated away, look at that yep. from Barkov. He was fired up. He had the smile. He is kissing the cup. It's like 11 years of being, you know, kind of a stoic leader yep. and doing everything right. Kind of all just came out yeah. of Alexander Barkov, a guy that came here as a teenager, yeah. Bo, and grew up in South Florida. The 100, 100, 100 favorite moments you could pick out yes, of this sir. series.
uh, you know, bad and good and bad. It, this was this was one of the great sports moments in in, in time that, that that we've had in South Florida, unlike any other. All right, well, we may have more great moments because on Sunday right here, CBS Miami, CBSMiami.com, Pluto TV, the Parade of Champions on Fort Lauderdale Beach. We will have it covered up and down A1A. All the coverage, CBS Miami starts at 1030 on Sunday. The celebration is not over, but I'll see you over there Sunday. Oh, we'll be there. We'll be there with bells on. <laughs> see you next time, everybody.